Okay, so next we're going to talk about the clean room equipment. So we've done our prep work and we're ready to go into the clean room and start preparing our laminar airflow hood. So that's where our primary engineering control, our PEC central piece of equipment is stored, is in the clean room or what we call the IV room. So depending on where you work, the number of hoods you might have would be depending on how large a facility you're working in, how many IVs you prepare. Um, that goes for our lab as well. There could, of course, we have one in our lab. Um, in some of the facilities, you may have a barrier isolator hood in your clean room. The vertical laminar flow hood in practice is located in a separate room from your clean room. By guidelines, it has to be in a uh, segregated area, and it also must be in a negative pressure room. That way it can contain any aspirations of the hazardous drugs. So let's talk about the different parts of the airflow HUD. So it's different names of the HUD to begin with. So we call it the HUD. Um, it's a laminar airflow hood. It's sometimes also called the cabinet or the workbench. Uh, it has a, a surgical steel framework, usually has a light over the top so that it, it will illuminate your work surface area. And the most important thing is it's built in such a way that it controls the environment which the air flows through. We've got to keep that airflow clean. So the pre-filter is located in the front or on the top of the hood. So in the illustration here, you see a pre-filter on the front at the bottom. So we have to make sure that we don't place anything in front of that that would obstruct the airflow. In the one that we have in lab that looks like this, our pre-filter is actually up into this top area here where the, the um, my pointer is showing. All right, so that pre-filter, it filters out the room air, prevents dust, hair, other particles or debris from entering into the hood. Uh, it has to be replaced on a regular basis, and the guidelines are to do that every 30 days. Now, remember, it has to be documented, because if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. The next is once the air comes through that pre-filter, the blower or a fan, which is sealed within the, the cabinet, um, blows the air up through the, the apparatus and then pushes it up through the HEPA filter and then out across the work area. This movement helps create the specific and consistent velocity, velocity which creates that ISO class 5 environment. So it's the one that keeps those particles at that minimum quantities or maximum quantities. So the next part is the work surface. The work surface is a stainless steel countertop. Now, in some clean rooms, they don't have hoods. The whole room is a clean room, which would be ISO class 5. So the air comes from the top and down, and the whole room would have your um, stainless steel workbenches. When we're compounding this workbench, we want to stay within 6 inches from 5, I'm sorry, 3 inches from the side six inches from the front for our DCA or direct compounding area. So you see that we have items located in the hood that are within this direct compounding area. We also want to make sure that they're going to be close to the back because this area here is where our clean air comes from. So we will change our color. That doesn't show up very well. we want to have it as close back to the, the filter as possible to get that clean air coming through. Now the HEPA filter is located where's my little, there we go, my little box, um, at the back of the hood and it's behind a protective grill and that's going to protect, protect us and trap any other um, 
particles or microbes that would be coming up through that got through this pre-filter and into the um, apparatus. So the HEPA filter, it's a permanent filter. We don't change it. So it has to be checked out. Every six months, whenever the cabinet is moved, or if we perceive that there might be damage to the cabinet. And that means that the filter got wet or maybe something cut the paper from the filter. Again, that process has to be documented and it's done by a professional company. It's not something we actually do in house. So that felt HEPA filter is certified every six months. So here's a cross section. So the pre-filter, the air comes in, it goes into the blower, comes out and it's sent out in sheets, which is what laminar means across our work surface area. So our direct compounding area in our outer six inch zone. So cross section, you've already seen this diagram. You should be familiar with that. Once we're in the clean room and we've brought in our supplies that we've previously cleaned in the ante room, we need to uh, start setting up for cleaning the hood. So our wipes, our sterile wipes or our gauze will be placed inside the DCA at least six inches inside the hood um, so that it doesn't get exposed to contaminated air. The protocol states the minimum timetable for cleaning is at the beginning of every shift, before every batch compounding session, and every 30 minutes during continuous sterile compounding. There's been a little discussion as to does that just mean the work surface or does that mean the whole hood? Generally, protocol says clean the hood. So that means cleaning the entire hood periodically throughout the shift. We also need to clean the hood when there's been a spill. So if there's surface contamination or we suspect surface contamination. So if we have some aspiration or we think something spills on there. Now, if it's a minimal spill, we can wipe it up with sterile isopropyl alcohol. But if it's um, more than five milliliters, we then have to clean the entire hood. Also in the clean room, aseptic garbage hand washing gloving procedures are performed before we start the hood cleaning. So we've gotten our garb and our hand washing done in the ante room and then once we get to the clean room we will do our gloving procedure. Supplies have to be cleaned prior to be brought, being brought in. Uh, <clears throat> so we also need to bring in certain supplies to clean the hood, lint-free, aseptic hood cleaning wipes, sterile water, and our sterile isopropyl alcohol. The specific, there is a specific order for hood cleaning procedure, so we will be going through that next. Now, the whole process requires documentation of the hood cleaning process because, as I've stated previously, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Okay, so cleaning the hood um, takes place in a specific order. So you want to start from the cleanest area to the dirtiest area. That way, if any contaminants fall, then they would be wiped away. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean the top of the hood. Now, your video and your book says to clean the, the bar and the hooks first and then clean the ceiling. It's kind of an interpretation of USP 797. Some feel that you should clean the ceiling first and then the bar and then the hooks. So we will probably clean the ceiling first and then the bar and then the hooks because when you're cleaning the ceiling you're going to rub against that bar so we could potentially contaminate it um however now that i think about it i'm sure the thought process is if you clean the bar if you know you don't you don't contaminate your gloves but we'll do the ceiling first and then the bar however you won't be marked wrong if you do the bar then the ceiling then we start in the back corner um, on the top left side at the very top of the, the side and we go down and then back up. And we do this in kind of a, a 
smooth motion kind of overlapping. We don't want to uh, be like kind of stuttering in the in the process of it because that can leave um, contaminants behind. Then we're going to come to the outer edge and we're actually going to wipe down the outside edge as well. And then if you're using gauze, you would dispose of your gauze. So each step, let me go back just a minute. If you're using gauze, you're going to take part of the stack off. And um, first we're going to, let me go back one more time. Okay, so we come into the hood and we put our gauze down on the DCA or we put our um, wipe. If it's pre-saturated, then we don't need to worry about putting any agents on it. But if it's not pre-saturated and the ones that we're using are not pre-saturated, we do have large wipes. We're going to fold them in half and fold them in half again so that they're actually in quarters. Then we're going to put on our water and we're going to clean. And if we're cleaning the ceiling, we're going to start in the, the left hand side at the top back corner and we're going to come across. And we're going to clean this way, sweeping motions back and forth. And we're going to wipe the outside um, edge. Then we're going to turn over our wipe. And we're going to use the side that was clean, that was against our glove. And we're going to clean the bar and then the hooks. Then we're going to open it up and we're going to flip it back on itself. So we're going to unfold the quarters and reverse the fold. Then we're going to start up in the top corner and we're going to come down side, side, side. Then we're going to turn it over and we're going to come to the right side and we're going to start at the top and come down side, side, side. Clean. All right, now we've used all four sides of one side of the wipe. Now we're going to open the wipe, fold it over, open it completely, fold it over, and you can fold it over again to quarter and now you're going to start at the interior and you're going to go wipe 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 across the work surface area and then we'll dispose of it we'll repeat that again with the alcohol if you're using gauze you're going to peel off layers so each time you clean one area you need a fresh layer to go so that's what it looks like when we clean the uh, surface area of the workbench so we don't want to use short staccato or kind of stuttering back or back and forth strokes that can create a turbulence and it could cause us to miss small portions. So we're going to go very smoothly and do a back and forth slightly overlapping as we move to the front, always from the back to the front, top to the bottom. Once the initial hood cleaning, like I said, is done with a sterile water, then we would repeat with our sterile IPA.